to 2 Peter. I'll do some teaching. I'm excited. I'm excited because, hallelujah, Christ Yahshua showed me a new way of doing things. Amen. Amen. A uh, completely new way of doing things. Amen. Hallelujah. And I have a great expectation and a great word. Amen. Tonight's message. Are you putting Ishmael out or giving him shelter? Once again. Are you putting Ishmael out or are you giving him shelter? Amen? We were commanded to put Hagar and Ishmael out. We were commanded that that of the flesh would not reign with that in the spirit. Amen? But what some of us have done, instead of putting Ishmael out, you have given shelter to Ishmael. You've given shelter to the, to the very thing that Yahweh called to remove. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15. It says, listen, now when I, I wrote a status on a, the status I wrote right before I came up here. Saints, you know, Yahweh gave me a word, I believe Yahweh gave me a word. I can't remember if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. But Yahweh said that um, he was making me a scholar on Facebook. Amen. Amen. And that my enemies were called a scholar. And I was with friends I was enemies. And, um, you know, what happened in our own ministry, I'm just being honest, what happened in our own ministry, I got a little disheartened. When I mean disheartened, I want y'all to listen. I got a little disheartened when I saw that men were not emulating after Christ, but after their sin. And when you have so many men in the fivefold ministry who begin to, to give into a homosexual spirit, give into a weak spirit, weak anointing, what they can't do. Then I begin to see these men come together and build leagues together out of their weakness. Hallelujah. But then, hallelujah, Yahweh reminded me, hallelujah, that the vision I've given you is going to stand. Some of the men in our ministry have given up hope. They're no longer trying to walk like a man, act like a man, and handle things as a man. But they begin to accept things like a woman. Now when I say accept things like a woman, I'm not downgrading women. I'm just saying that men are not walking in the role that Christ called them to walk in. What happens in my life is that men will begin to draw away from me. Amen. But then Yahweh began to tell me, I gave you a word and the word will stand. I mean, there's a scripture. It says, Bless those who hunger and thirst after righteousness because they will be filled. Amen. Saints, you got to want this. Amen. Amen. You, you got to want it. Hallelujah. And what happens is that people begin to treat people out of their hurt and not out of their faith. In other words, if you feel that the bishop hurt you, you begin to interact with the bishop based on hurt and not out of faith. When you interact out of faith, then all of us are supposed to have relationships with faith one with another because now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you with me, saints? Now, hallelujah, this being true, hallelujah, Yahweh is commanding us to put out the Ishmael. Hallelujah, but some of us, what's taking place is the very Ishmael we put out. You're saying, oh, who put you out? 
Oh, that was wrong for them to do that. Oh, they didn't have love. And some of us, you're taking in somebody else's Ishmael. You're taking in somebody else's pain, somebody else's hurt. You're taking in something that Christ never called you to walk in or be a part of. Amen. 2 Peter 3.15. And I was meditating. And, um, and I'm bringing great change to my life. And, and it's beginning, Hallelujah, with the young men. Amen. I'm totally interjecting into the young men's lives. I'm determined that they're going to be who Yahweh called them to be. Amen. I'm determined of that. In the name of Yahshua, I need you with me. 2 Peter 3, 15 reads as follows. An account that the long suffering of our Adonai is salvation. Can someone say the long suffering of our Adonai is salvation? The long suffering of our Adonai is salvation. Even our beloved brother, Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him. So Yahweh began to tell me, Holly, that you're be known as a scholar on Facebook, and because of this, you'll see my statuses, but I never start a war. Amen? Holly, what happens, Holly, is someone comes out, Holly, they always come out as if they're asking the question whatever, and I'll take that question because that very question that they're asking, other people are asking too, and I'll make it into a status. Amen? And the status that I wrote before I came here, I, I, before I came up to minister, I said, I dance like I teach. Or I teach like I dance. And when I dance, people say, oh, he's into himself. Oh, he's in the flesh. Uh, he thinks he's so cool. He thinks he's so bad. And I'm saying, I'm not dancing for you or me. I'm dancing for him. Amen. When I teach, I don't teach for nobody but him. That I will not bring him to shame. I need you with me. I need you with me very boldly. My wife got a word. And uh, we went to Timmy Chris's. We went to Timmy Chris's uh, award show. And my wife, well, you know, we go. We live in North Newark. And the public schools in North Newark, they do not hide being Latino. Everything about them is Latino. You know, the dance. You know, everything. The play. Everything is Latino. But what my wife was saying is that. The Latinos in school have a more freedom in their culture than the Latinos in our ministry. Whereas the Latinos in our ministry, they don't even bring forth their culture. In other words, when you go to the school, they dance. Amen. I mean, they bring out their culture. Whereas here, you don't see that. It's almost as if the Latinos here want to conform to something else or not be who they really are. This is very important. Listen, some of you don't understand what I'm saying, so let me go a little deeper. So for my daughter's birthday, she wanted her hair done. I mean, and uh, she wanted her hair because she saw some Sanaya do her hair, so she wanted to go to the same place. And my wife took her to, to Sanaya's, wherever Sanaya got her hair done, Holly. And when she came home, she had it all wrapped up. And she said, Daddy, do you see my hair? My hair is beautiful. I said, no, Tatiana, your hair is always beautiful. Your hair is beautiful when you got an Afro pop. <laughs> my daughter to understand you don't conform to somebody else's definition of beauty. When you conform to somebody else's definition of beauty, you degrade your own. Y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. It's a good uh, This being true, Hallelujah, Yahweh has given us a uniqueness that some of us were not walking in. I'm going to get deep. Let me just start reading here. An account that the long suffering of our Adonai is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to wisdom, according to the Greek word kata, K-A-T-A, please write that down, kata, K-A-T-A. It means down, it means throughout, it means according to, it means toward along, kata. According to kata, kata, Sophia, Sophia's wisdom, S-O-P-H-I-A. Sophia means wisdom. It means full of intelligence. It means use of knowledge of very uh, use of knowledge of very diverse matters. Amen. Yes. It means wisdom, broad and full of intelligence, use of 
the knowledge of very diverse matters. Amen. And wisdom acquired from experience. I need you to look with me. So it says, Cata Sophia, give it. Give it is diddle me. Amen. D I D O M I, diddle me. D I D O M I, diddle me. It means to give. It means to give to someone. Hallelujah. To their advantage or for their advantage. To bestow a gift. I, I need you to listen, Hallelujah, because, saints, we need a change tonight. We, we need a breakthrough tonight. And I begin telling my kids, I've been telling everyone, this is what I do. What you see me do, this is what I do. This is what I, and I love doing what I do. I, I, I just love it. I get a kick out of it. I'm in. And I see how Yahweh's establishing things and how Yahweh's fortifying things. And I, I said the same way that Elder Stephen is an artist is the same way that I'm a bishop. Uh, the same way that Dr. Apostle Chris is a doctor is the same way that I'm a bishop. I, I need you with me. Amen. It's my job to be here every new day prayer. It might not be your job, but it's my job. It's my job to train up the five-fold ministry. It's my job. So now that I'm building up the young men in the name of Yahshua to carry the house and to carry the vision. Amen. Amen. But in so doing, I'm teaching the young men, you got to put away your Ishmael. Amen. Amen. You can't give shelter to it. Some of us, we give shelter to the wrong emotions, the wrong feelings, and the wrong desires. Amen. And before you know it, you're turned inside out, and you're something you were never called to be in Christ. Amen. I refuse to be a broken man. Amen. <laughs> Brokenness in Christ is a choice. Amen. I refuse to be a broken man because I know Yahweh Rapha. I know I am that I am that healeth me. Amen. And the word says David encouraged himself in Yahweh. Amen. I need you with him. This being so in the name of Yahshua. Amen. It's time for a new level of diligence. Amen. Yes, and it's Yahweh's going to bring it forth. But here, how they speaks of Apostle Paul that he has this catasophia. He has this sophia. He has this wisdom, this intellect that is coming down. Amen. It is coming down. It has been given to him, diddle me, for his advantage. Hallelujah. And unto him he has written unto you. Are you with me, saints? Verse 16. We're about to go deeper. As also, are you with me? Amen. As also in all of his epistles. Epistle is the Greek word. Please write this down. Epistole. In other words, I want you to know that episto is not an English word. It's been transliterated. Epistle. E-P-I-S-T-O-L-E. Epistle. It means a letter. It means epistle. Must get transliterated. If they transliterate the epistle, they can transliterate even the name of the Father. Innocent. Amen. And also in all his epistles, speaking. I mean, speaking is Laleo. Laleo. L-A-L-E-O. Leo, it means to utter a voice, to emit a sound. I mean, I need y'all with me. You with me? Amen. See, what's happening now is that we have people who are struggling over a word. I was meditating on this, and I want y'all to listen to this. Chastisement denotes relationship. Amen. If you're not being chastised, it means you don't have a relationship with Christ. Because the word says, those he chastised, he loves. He only chastised his sons. And if he doesn't chastise you, you're a bastard. So here it is that we have the Christian church. And I want to tell you about the Christian church. i got to get here. I'm in because I'm hitting very heavy. And I'm going to hit heavy. Because Yahweh says, I'm making you a scholar. Getting very happy that Christianity is not a European religion. It didn't start in Europe. I mean, you don't have any European authors. I mean, you don't have not one Gentile author in the Bible. Luke was not a Gentile. He was a Jew. Because Luke was one of the 70 disciples. I need you with me for a moment. I mean, Hallelujah. Christianity didn't go into Europe until Acts chapter 16, verse 13. I mean, for all you can count, there's 16 chapters before that and 12 verses. And the first person converted in Europe was a woman. Amen. This being true, we have to understand that the center of Christianity was the Jewish temple up until 70 AD when Titus destroyed the Greeks. After that, the uh, center of Christianity was Africa. Alexander, once again, until the, the Romans destroyed that and took it forcibly to Rome. Amen. So there is no European root anywhere in Christianity. Amen. 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 
Y'all not with me? Amen. And as I'm saying this, some folks are getting upset. But why are they getting upset when it's true? Amen. Why are they getting mad? I mean, if the center of Christianity was the temple, Amen. some people want to say Jerusalem. No, it was the temple because that's where Yaakov was. Was the temple? How that, for everyone who knows history, the Jewish revolt began in 66 AD. Everyone say 66 AD. 66 AD. Say it again. 66 AD. 66 AD. Say it again. 66 AD. 66 AD. 66 AD. 66 AD. All you people not saying it. Say it again. 66 AD. 66 AD. One more time. 66 AD. 66 AD. One more time. 66 AD. 66 AD. 66 AD. They say if you say things seven times, you're more likely to remember it. Yeah. 66 AD is when the Jewish revolt began. This is straight up history. The Jews revolted against the Romans over their culture. The root of anyone's culture is their language. Amen. So here it is, Halleck, that the Yahudians, they rebelled. Remember, Halleck, that according to how our historians have it, is that Christ basically, they say, died 30 AD. Are you with me, saints? So we have to understand that 30 years basically after his death, the Jewish people revolted over their culture. I need you with me. And they would have never received Christ as their Messiah had he not been into his culture. Amen. So the Romans understanding this, they said in order for us to stop this rebellion, we've got to destroy the temple. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are not with me, so let me go deeper. The devil wants you to destroy your temple. The devil wants you to destroy the door of the temple of the Holy Spirit. The devil wants you to cut you off from the world. And what some of us were doing, we're struggling with a hard word that Yahweh gave us. Amen. Yahweh never gave you a word for you to struggle with it, but for you to be coming in the name of Yahshua. Some of us were struggling when Yahweh says, put your Ishmael out. Put your Hagar out. And you go around saying, you got all this love. I mean, it's wrong for them to put you on the street. It's wrong for them to do that. It's wrong for you to take in something that Yahweh commanded someone else to put out. Right. Yeah. Let me go deeper. When Yahweh told Abraham to put out Ishmael, what actually was he saying? He was saying, put out your family. Mm, you're not with me. You're not with me. No, 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 no. You're not with me. Amen. He, he said, put out your family. For 13 years, Abraham raised him as his firstborn son. For 13 years, Ishmael was raised as the promise. And then Yahweh said, put him and his mother out. I don't want you worried about what they're going to eat. I don't want you worried about if they're going to have shelter. I don't want you worried about if they're going to have somewhere to go. Some of y'all, y'all got more love than Jesus. You got more love than Jesus. I mean, because you are over loving. I mean, you're over loving. You're loving something you're not supposed to be loving. He said, you, oh, y'all not ready. Come on, come on, Sean, stand up. I feel the Lord. Don't mind me. Hallelujah. Here it is there. Sean comes to me after Pastor Kelvin rebukes him. Pastor Kelvin rips him. Amen. Pastor Kelvin chastises him. And then I come to Sean and I'm like, oh, it was wrong what he did. He didn't show you no love. I mean, Y'all not listening to me. It was wrong, I mean, uh, you know, he didn't use the right words. Christians have become such whips. I said this in New Day Prayer. I said, hey, they want you to cuss in French. Because wow. it sounds nice. Come on, come on, come on. Christians have become so false. They want you to rebuke them in politeness. Be polite. Please don't do that, says Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh says, if you keep doing that, you'll be. They want. I got that with me. You see, what no one talks about is one of the roots of the name Jesus, one of the roots of the picture of Jesus, one of the roots of the long hair, uh, the blue eyes and the blonde hair. The root of that, it makes Christ effeminate. And then we want to treat one another effeminate. Me in a 
I'll give you all the cheek. I mean, the real man, you gotta be sure with him. If I hit him, he might hit me back. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. I need y'all listen to this for a moment. And what is taking place is now being a man in church is forbidden. Being a man is militant. Y'all get Are you a man, you're militant. He's just too militant. I mean, you, 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 you know, I love saying this in the name of Yahshua. You with me? Someone please tell me, how did Christ speak to 5,000 people without a microphone? I've been to Yisrael. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. There's nothing out there but open space. I mean, do you know how much you have to project your voice for 5,000 people to hear you? And project your, pro, project your voice. You cannot project your voice with a whisper. Yes. You project it with a command. Yes. Yes. So here it is. It's wrong for me to give shelter to Sean when Yahweh has rebuked him. Yes. And we have a, a bunch of vagabond Christians. Looking for shelter from another world. Listen, hurt Christians, to prove that they're hurt Christians, wherever they go, they get hurt. They get hurt here, they get hurt there, they get hurt in their house. They're always hurt. Because otherwise, the problem would be the church and not you. But Christ has a way of showing you the problem is in the church, it is you. You can sit down. Oh my goodness. Saints, I, I need, you know, y'all don't understand how much, how much joy Yahweh gave me. Amen. And he began to, to, to tell me, build a new house. Y'all not with me. Build, build a new house. I mean, y'all say, you, you, you're a professional. Build a new house. Amen. I mean, build that new house in the name of God. Sure. That's it. And I begin to understand that some people's definition of manhood is better than my definition of manhood. Hallelujah. But I'm not backing down. I'm not backing down. I need you with me. I mean, 2 Peter 3, 16, it says, and also, with me, and also, in all his epistles, speaking, speaking in the, of these things, in which are some things, is somebody with me? Hard to be understood. Hard to be understood is the Greek word Dus no atos. Dus no atos. D U S N O E T E T. I'm sorry. T O S. D U S N O E T O S. Dus no atos. It means hard to be understood. Everyone say hard to be understood. Say it again. Hard to be understood. Hard to be understood. Some of us will wrestle with things. That is hard to be understood, and because it's hard to be understood, you're rejected. Mm -hmm. But here in this epistle, Apostle Peter is talking about people who struggle with the words of Apostle Paul. Right, right, right. I need you. You see, you have a lot of people struggling with words. I mean, uh, Mark Grisham, he uh, he's been trying to contact me, so I spoke to him today. I need y'all with me. I need y'all. Oh, Holly, I am so excited. <laughs> I need you with you. In the name of Yahshua, also call up. Father, you, 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 you're worthy. You know, all of you, Yahweh's going to bless you with your heart's desire. All of you. Amen. And you need to have that goodness. What's this? Says, and also, in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are. And some hard to understand. That's dos no atos. It means hard to be understood. I mean, which they that are unlearned. Unlearned is the Greek word a mathes. A mathes. A m a t h e s. A mathes. It means unlearned and ignorant. Everyone say 
Amathis. Unlearned and ignorant. Unlearned and ignorant people have a hard time with the name Yahshua. Yes, Unlearned and ignorant people have a hard time that Christmas is not in their body. Mm -hmm. Unlearned and ignorant people have a hard time with truth even though they say how it is true. Unlearned and ignorant people always say there is no other name than Jesus. Jesus is the only name you can be saved in and they're too ignorant to know that it's an English name. Amen. And that Christ is Jewish. Amen. So just by saying Jesus has got to be another name Y'all get y'all get quiet. Just by you saying Jesus has got to be another name because Christ wasn't given a slave name. Just because the English is slave too. Let me tell you, this, this is where Christians get upset. Let me tell you what Christians get upset. Christians get upset like, well, it works. Yeah, it works. Huh? And guess what? When Moshe threw down his rod. Pharaoh threw down his rod too. And it too became a snake. So guess what? Keep doing what you're doing. But if you hear from the Holy Spirit, not to him. To him that knows to do right and does it not, to him it is sin. I mean, and we got the fivefold ministry sitting boldly. Let's bring it on home. We got some people in our church sitting boldly because you're not where Christ commanded you to be. You're not what Christ commanded you to be. I mean, and you're struggling because the bishop gave you a hard word. You're struggling because somebody gave you a hard word. Well, guess what? Apostle Paul did it all the time. Who's the cover? I need you with me. Come on, be with me for a moment. Mathis means, Mathis means unlearned and ignorant. He says some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and ignorant and unstable. Unstable is the Greek word asteristos. Asteristos. A, like asterisk. A S T E R I K T O S. It means unstable and unsteadfast. I, I need you with me for a moment. So, Minister Long, when I begin to recognize the only time that the enemy can come at me is when I'm unstable and when I'm struggling over the word of Yahweh. So you never want to struggle over the word of Yahweh. You, 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 you do not want to delay on the word of Yahweh. You want to move on that word because that word will bring great change in your life. So here is Yahweh gave me words. I'm, I'm mad crazy. Y'all don't even know how crazy I am. I'm mad crazy. It's like Yahweh gave me a word. Yahweh gives me permission. You know, so the scripture says, but when the time that the kings went out to war. Yahweh gives me a scripture to go to war on Facebook. When Yahweh sends me out to war, I go out to war on Facebook. Amen. Amen. I go out to war in the name of Yahshua. Because Holly, I have an audience from Africa, Europe. Amen. This is the first time I went to war ever on Facebook and I lost no friends. I gave you. This is the first time I ever. I think Yahweh gave me a Amen. Holly. So I begin to understand that what's taking place in the name of Yahshua. This is another thing. Holly. You see, the church is backwards. Let me tell you how the church is backwards. The church is backwards because the church doesn't know there's Google out there now. There's Yahoo out there now. You know? So people can just Google it. Uh -huh. I mean, and let me tell you what the church is out in there too, because the church thinks the audience is just the church. The church is the whole world. I need y'all with me for a moment. I'm in. Oh, I am so happy and excited. As also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to un understood, which they which are unlearned and unstable rest. Anyone see the word rest? Amen. They rest with. Amen. Are you with me? Rest, Hale, is the Greek word strep lo. Strep lo. That's S T R E B L O O. Strep. Strep lo. I would pronounce it strep blue. -o. <laughs> Amen. That's how I would pronounce it. I don't know how they got to pronounce it. Strep low. -o. Well, that's what it is. They got strep dash low o. I mean strep low. -o. Listen to what it means. You with me? I need y'all with me. It means to twist. It means to torture. It means to pervert. It means y'all with me? If you're with me, raise your hand. It means to wrestle or torture. That comes from language. Y'all know it. Let's put it in plain words. Plain words what the Bible says. 
Some people are tortured by what you say. What church people say, you hurt me. Mm -mm, you need to get into the Greek. I mean, what the Greek says, Apostle Paul's writing, it tortures them. I mean, it twists them. I mean, there's, I need someone with me. there's something wrong if Christ is torturing you. I mean, if Christ is torturing you, go the other way. If he's torturing me, you're going the wrong way. Just turn around. I need somebody with me. If you're being tortured by the word, oh my goodness, I feel the Lord. If you come in here and you feel tortured by the word, it's because Christ is turning you the opposite of the way that you're going. And this is what, this is what I'm going to do. I, I want to write a book about this. Because when the church is backward, the church is backward for saying, oh, me, me, you hurt me. Instead of saying, was it Yahweh who spoke? Mm. Oh, 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 Bishop, you hurt me. But it, was it Yahweh who spoke? Was it true? Is the word twisting you a different way? I need somebody with me for a moment in the name of Yahshua. Because we've got to, you know something, I, you know, I meditate on this. If y'all got kids, you got kids, raise your hand. You got kids, you be on the phone like, yeah, hold it. Stop! Get down! Wait a minute. Hey, get them. Come here. Do it again in my spank. Is that anybody with me? Stop acting like we raise our kids like, don't do that again. Like, you're making me look. You see them on the phone. Say, no. It's a lie. It's a lie. And we brought these lies into the body of Christ. And we, we, what the church is trying to do is making it to norms. You're even to the word that rebuke is a bad word. I need y'all look because they're going to get eaten. I mean, remember what an Ishno is. Ishno is a family member. Ishno is somebody you got relationship with. Ishno is somebody. Ishno is not a stranger. I mean, and the very word Ishno means Elohim is her. I mean, you can't go back to Ishmael and say, Elohim is her. You've been a prophecy. No, you got to put Ishmael and his mother out. Otherwise, Ishmael is going to persecute your promise. I need somebody with me. Is your flesh persecuting your promise? To the point that you feel tortured. I mean, if you feel tortured, you need to put the thing from the flesh out. I mean, hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. You know, y'all don't like what I'm about to say. Stop being afraid of losing and just lose it. <laughs> if you're afraid of losing your marriage, just lose it. Y'all not with me. Just lose it. Get it over with. I mean, you know, I was meditating. I mean, Minister Fuquan, you went through the same thing my wife went through. When y'all was dealing with you and your sons, I remember speaking to you. I mean, I, I, I need y'all with me. It comes a time when Yahweh says, let him go. Mm. It's like, yo, Yahweh cannot be telling me this. Mm. No, 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 no. No, I know Yahweh not giving me this word. Y'all, hey. Let them go. But no, I, but I can't let them go. Mm. I mean, it comes a time you got to let your kids go. It's only for so much you have. Let them go. Like, whoa, I can't do it. Let them go. When you let them go, that's when they're in Yahweh's hands. I mean, you got to let them go. I mean, you know, when you let your kid go to college, you got to let them go. When you let them go to school, you got to let them go. We get in trouble. When we try to hold on to something Yahweh said, let go. We get in trouble when we give shelter to something Yahweh wants to be rained on. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, Father, I magnify you. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, and all his epistles, speaking in love of these things in which some things are hard to be understood. And here is the body of Christ. They're like, oh, Beth Hashem, Yahweh, you make things so difficult. It's all about winning souls. It's all about winning souls. Yes, it's all about winning souls. And that's what truth does. Amen. I mean, but truth makes you long last. Yes. I mean, truth causes you to work it out. I mean, hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, and unstable. They rest. Amen. Strep, strep low. They twist. They turn. They're tortured. I, I want y'all to listen. Anybody who's in the fivefold ministry or in this ministry, you've been tortured, it's time to stop resisting. Amen. Amen. It's time to stop. You know, even when you, when, when, you know, when you're wrestling, like, hey, you, you, fuck, you know, tap out. You don't tap out, so I'm going to break. But tap out. Y'all with me? Come on, saints. Understand Christ, he loves us. He wants you to tap out. Y'all not with me. Hallelujah. If y'all know your body, Yaakov didn't tap out. So Yahweh dislocated his thigh. 
He didn't tell you. I'm with me. I mean, yeah, come on, saints. Yeah, yeah, you know, once again, uh, let's understand. I mean, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly who was wrestling. Yeah. But we know it was somebody of the Yahweh. Yeah. I mean, because the word says he wrestled with Elohim. Y'all yeah. not with him. Yeah. I mean, because you're not with him, I'm going to go deeper. Yeah. I mean, if you don't tap out, Christ will dislocate something in you. Yeah. I mean, and you have to walk around the rest of your life with him. Yeah. I mean, he never feels sorry about you. Huh? Uh, say, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you how to do broke. I mean, and some of us will get broke. Why? How did, because we get saved through brokenness. Yeah. And he loves us enough. How did he teach us? I mean, and you know what? It's like you having a son and he just want to man up. You're like, oh, no, 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 I'm still dead. <laughs> Are you with me? And some of us, we refuse to tap out. And here it is. He's been giving us everything. Tap out. Yeah. I mean, everything to tap out. I mean, but what I need you to understand, I mean, that some of us, honey, it's become a part of our character to be ignorant. It's become a part of your character that you always are tortured by the word. That's why you can't stand this church. You can't stand this church because it tortures you. But what you're not honest about is you want another ministry you can hide in. But I love you too much to lie to you. I mean, I love you too much to leave you in that state. I love you too much to allow you to be comfortable in your foolishness. Hold on, seat. I need y'all with me very speedily in the name of Yahshua. However, hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. But this was so deep. As they do also, you with me? As they do also the other scriptures. You with me? In other words, it's just not Apostle Paul, but they do it with all the scriptures. I mean, the word says, unto their own destruction. I mean, Destruction, Holly, is the Greek word. Apollia. Apollia. A P O L E I A. A P O L E I A. It means destroying, utter destruction. It means perishing, and it means ruin. He's the Father. Are you with me, saints? Hallelujah. He's the Father. You are worthy. You're worthy to be praising things. Amen. Let us turn to Galatians chapter 4. Let's receive the time and offer all the prayer requests. Saints, I need you with me. So, you know, my wife, she tells me, like, look, we got to, you know, I love my mother. She's like, look, we got to pray for your mother. Amen. All, all she does all day is fight your sister. And she basically tells your sister, you ain't no doctor. I'm a doctor. No, I want y'all listening. Amen. But saints, listen, I'm keeping it real with you. My mother's here today. Amen. This is who I am. You know, I love the world. And I told my sister, I told Boo, I'm, like, I'm praying for mom. I'm praying for my mother to submit. I'm praying for my mother to submit to wisdom, to Dr. Apostle Chris. And I'm praying for my mother to receive her ministry so she can receive her family, so she can walk in her own life. I said, I, you know, you see, you see, people frustrate us and we just want to separate. But I'm like, no. I'm not separating myself, Dre. I mean, I'm coming out of this a winner. I mean, I'm coming out of this a winner. And I need y'all with me. But in order for us to be that winner, first we got to deal with how we wrestle with this world. You with me, Elder Mike? We got to deal with it. And, 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 and what I love about House of Bishops, what I love about House of Bishops, and I, 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 this is what I told, I told the, the people, young people, you look, I started this bench when I was 30. Some of y'all coming close to 30. I mean, I had a zeal. What I loved about the House of Bishops, everybody had a love for the Word. Yeah, I mean, they just loved it. I mean, honey, you got to begin to recognize when you lost it and how you lost it. Oh, uh, y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. I see people acting feminine now who didn't act feminine in the old building. I mean, I see people walking something bold and they would have never walked in the old building. Y'all yeah, yeah, not with me in the name of Yahshua. But, but we have to always remember that our sin wants to convert us. Our, 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 our sin wants to take us backward. Is anybody with me? Galatians chapter 4. Mm, mm, mm. Man, I, I tell you, I'm believing y'all for great miracles and great wonders. In the name of Yahshua. I pray for everybody in this ministry. I, nothing evil is going to befall us in the name of Yahshua. But it's time for us to get serious again. It's time for us to get serious again about a blessing. It's time for us to get serious again about fellowship. It's, it's time for us to get serious again. It, it, it's time for, for, for us to recognize, hallelujah. Come on, saints. I mean, 
Come on, I, you know, I've been out there. You know, you know, I already got the words that I was going to die through sexual sin. Stop acting like that word is on hold. <laughs> it's not on hold. And then you're sure we're just not in it no more. Amen. Uh, it's waiting on you. Y'all not with me. Amen. Did you know, y'all with me? Listen. When you get older, you should be smart enough to recognize I got saved from something. Amen. You know, the train was coming. Y'all would jump in. And the train was still coming. Like, don't worry about that train. <laughs> Just accept me in your heart. You know? And we're like, oh man. But when we fell and realized, hallelujah, is that if we ever leave Christ, bah, bah, poof. That train is still there waiting to hit you. It's grace. Y'all know with me? It's grace that kept the train from hitting you. <laughs> it was great. And for some reason, we got out of danger. You're not out of danger, you're just an anointing. <laughs> you don't see it like that no more. Are you with me? You, you, you just don't see it like that. Oh my goodness. I, I feel the anointing. Since you don't know, I'm, I'm praying crazy prayers. I'm praying for my father to live to you. Amen. And I believe nothing would destroy my father more. I think nothing would destroy my father more than my mother dying before him. You know, he, he, I mean, he, he got all this life insurance for her. You know, I, he, I'm serious. He got the, all these plans going on. You know, he always planned on dying first. I mean, but now, Holly, I got these little kids. It's not just about my mother and father anymore. Now they're grandparents. Uh, you were the only grandparents they know. I mean, y'all not with me, man. You see, Holly, there's always something good. We've been struggling. We've been stuck. Talk to yourself in the word in just a minute. Amen. Amen. Galatians 4. Father, you are worthy. You're worthy to be thanked, worthy to be praised. He said, God of Amen. Let me get in Galatians. Come on, saints. Are you hot? Yes. Good. Everything's perfect then. So I got all these words. I study all the time. And um, let me tell you how I got this word. What time is it? I want to keep it to it. I got this word because I went to pick up my daughters from school. I'm on a, I'm on a whole new schedule now. I mean, I, I'm, on a, I'm on a real good schedule now. I usually get up at 5.30. I usually go to bed maybe 3 or something. I get up at 5.30 as well. I see a little bit. I'm cool. So I, get I get up at 5.30. I'm like, you know, I'm into what my job is. It's my job to take the kids to school. And I usually make that food too, oatmeal, you know. Sometimes my wife let me sleep a little bit later, you know, let me sleep until, you know, close to taking them. So I take my girls to school, I'm in, and I want to pick them up, you know, in noonday prayer. I mean, I only miss noonday prayer one day because my wife had to take Tatiana, which one called, because this is my job. I mean, because I'm training the young men, and noonday prayer is full of young men, you know, it's full of young men in the name I showed because I know how to get blessed. And I know how to get people on the path of bless. I know how to do that. Okay. So I picked up Jessica Ann. And then when I went to pick up Timmy. When I went to pick up Timmy, um, I had Jesse with me because I already picked up Tati. And, um, you know, T Timmy, Timmy has these, you know, Tim people just love Timmy. She has like full-blown relationship with the teachers. Right. So, you know, and Timmy's like, look, Daddy, this is what I got for you. And she's like, no, you're not supposed to show him. It's for Father's Day. She's like, well, I didn't show him this something inside. And she said, well, I hope you have a good Father's Day. I said, I'm going to have a good Father's Day as long as my kids don't fight and they're quiet. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, because you have five daughters. I said, no, I have four. She says, no, you have five with your wife's other daughter. I said, no, 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 no. T.A.G.? T.A.G.'s not my daughter. I said, T.A.G. doesn't want me to be her father. T.A.G. left my house for Yes. I have four doors. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 That, was, that was, I'm going to pump him. I'm going to tell him that I know. Well, guess what? I don't care that you know. Hallelujah. Because I know what Yahweh told me. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you have a house, that house, I mean, that house cannot be ruled by anyone else. So I had to let her know, no, no, I have four daughters. And then, let me tell you, I even went further. I said, my wife has four daughters, too. Yes. I said, and that's just that. I said, my wife's mother, she hates my guts. 
and I love it. I love every moment of it. Because my wife's mother fell to realize by hating my guts, you have no influence over my children. You don't fall, you don't show. Now for some Christians, the Jesus loving Christians, that's unloving. That's so unloving. And because it's so unloving, you always have a testimony. I'm not going to put no man before my kids if it's your husband you're supposed to. Any man in here would be crazy to marry a woman who's going to put their kids before him because that's not a wife. <laughs> my Uncle Harrison, I love him. Uncle Harrison, I mean, he's, he's he, you know, he, I don't know, he's been married three, four times. You know, those Gregory boys. Well, anyway, he, his, I think it was his last wife. He's like, uh uh uh. I, 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 we, we, had, we had to split up. He like, her three sons going in my refrigerator, getting my food, and they 19, 20, and 24. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, no, these are my sons. Oh, no, 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 these are men. <laughs> Galatians 4. 
Father, you, you are worthy. Amen. How I'm going to begin with uh, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Yitzhak, we are the children of the promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. I need y'all with me, okay? You with me? Now I want you to listen because I'm going to let you go very speedily. Which could be in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> but as then he that was born after the flesh, amen, persecuted. Persecuted is the Greek word dioko. Dioko. Amen. We put it right here. Amen. Dioko. Matter of fact, what you can do, let me help you out. Come on, come on, move on, move on. Come on now. He said, come on up here, uh, Minister Ron and uh, Dominic. Come on up here, Dominic. Go ahead, give the, give the camera to uh, show. <laughs> Listen, so, well, you know, we're in noonday prayer because, you know, I call people up like this. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm staying on. We're we, we packed. Benny's going to always be here when he's there. He's just, we got we this whole group. And Minister Louie, don't nobody touch him. No, Minister Louie, I mean. <laughs> I told him, I said, look. You have, look, they're about to get married. I mean, I said, you have to call things the way they are. The devil wants you to destroy princess, and the devil wants you to destroy God. The devil wants you to give them a testimony all men and dogs. Amen. And if your marriage fell, you never have no one to blame but you. But the husband is the head. I need y'all with So I told him, you got to begin to stake out now who you are in Christ. Because you know the war is coming. As soon as you say I do, the war is coming. Sexual temptation is coming, the war is coming. And that's when you got to make up your heart and mind. I'm going to fight, I'm going to stay. But you got to do it now. You got to have that heart to do it now. You're going to have the heart and the mind, Holly, to defend your family now. Holly, you got to make up your mind now that you're going to be successful. you got to make up your mind right now because you know exactly how the enemy's going to attack. You know exactly how the enemy's coming. But you have to have your mind set now. Why? Because if you do not have a successful marriage, it's going to spread all throughout the ministry. If you try to take hope from me, Hope from Pastor Kelvin. Amen. Hope from all the rest of us who are already men. So you have to understand that now you're given a new responsibility. I need y'all with me. Y'all got a head start. You know what a head start is, right? Head start is you ain't married. <laughs> so all you see is good. All you see is good. All you see is good. It ain't all good, man. I'm letting you know now. Amen. And the worst part. Your flesh don't get married. <laughs> you know, it's not no magical thing you say when you say you do. You know, come on, don't lie. I'm only going to be attracted to my wife. Any man who says he's only attracted to his wife is lying. <laughs> lying. Yeah. Christ does not give you a special anointing that you only can be attracted. <laughs> lying. Uh, you got to come up with rules. I got rules. Uh, if I turn around, I'm sick. <laughs> you gotta, come on, you gotta come on rules. You know? Bye bye. But the warfare is coming. But that's what coming. I'm gonna let you go. You gotta understand, we have to stop wrestling with words. You don't need to be close to anybody who's gonna wrestle with words. Because that's gonna take from you. You sit down. Very speedily, I mean. It says, but as. To them that are born after the flesh, he persecuted. Dioko. It means to make. D I O K O. Come on, this, I'm going to let you go after this. Now get a little rest. I'll continue this Sunday. Maybe. Dioko. It means to make run. It means to flee. It means to put the flight. You with me? It means to drive away. You with me? Amen. Okay, Holly, come up here, Ron. Right there. Y'all with me? Amen. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit. So your flesh is trying to put your promise on the run. Look, I'm in. Where's the word? At the top. 
Amen. Nioko, uh, dioko. It means to make run, to make free, to put the flight. So some of you, your flesh is putting your promise to flight. I mean, you have your, your flesh. That's why you have put your Ishmael out. Because what your Ishmael is constantly doing, your Ishmael is trying to kill. Your Ishmael is a king. Your Ishmael is a king coming up against your aim. Might you be a bishop again if you put your Ishmael out? Y'all know it. This is going to hurt. Ishmael is always family. Everyone say Ishmael. Ishmael is family. family. Ishmael is always something close to you. That when you put them out, you're going to miss them. Y'all not with me. You know, when you miss somebody, the first thing that happens is your heart is broken. Some of us, our deliverance is in heart broken. But, but here it is. Come over here. I mean, your flesh is constantly trying to kill your promise. I mean, and that's how come you can't wrestle with this. You got to become this. Oh, 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 I'm breaking it down now. You with me? Um, once again, it says, but he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Verse 30. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Amen. Amen. What am I saying? Saints, in order for y'all to be free and build the relationships that Christ called you to build, you've got to put the Ishmael out. You have to put out what's persecuting the word in you. Amen. You have to put out what is putting the word on the run in your life. Amen. You have to put it out. Just one more scripture. Let us turn to Genesis. Verse 8. Genesis 21. What, what did I, I, let me tell you what I told Minister Ron. Saints, you never give somebody a word that's not you. I mean, look, man, I said, look, man, the word I'm giving you, it's my word. What the enemy wants me to do is go outside of my marriage and have a son. The enemy wants, I'm going to say it again because y'all not listen. The enemy wants me to go outside of my marriage and have a son. If I go outside of my marriage and have a son, if I want to keep my relationship, I can't have a relationship with my son. Y'all not listening to me. Me and my wife are trying to have a son, so if I go into sexual sin, I will have a son. I know I have a son. But that's what happens. That's what goes down. You with me? And then that comes against the whole relationship of the family I already have. I mean, it disrupts my whole definition of daddy to Timmy Chris. Jessica and Tatiana and Kai. I mean, come on, saints. I do a real issues. So I'm telling Minister Ron and I'm telling Dominic, I got the same word you got. The same way the enemy wants you to destroy God, and the same way the enemy wants you to destroy Princess, it's the same way the enemy wants me to destroy my wife. It's the same way the enemy wants you to destroy somebody. That's why we got to put the Ishmael out. That's why we can't rest with the word. I mean, Verse 21, verse 14. Father, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. It reads, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let me, let me get here. Verse 9, you with me? Oh, come on, I'm going to read and let you go. Come on, saints, this is my message tonight. You know? <laughs> I didn't have time to put it on an iPad. You know, they got like three scriptures here. We ain't going to go here. Romans 8, Romans 8 is all good because Romans 8, see, I'm talking again. Uh, maybe you say that for Sunday. I mean, uh, but Ishmael always puts you in the flesh. I mean, in the flesh of mine is enmity against Shem. You with me? I mean, uh, 20, 21 9 says, And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian. Listen, listen what the name Hagar means. Hagar means to put the flight. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, Mark. Now remember, saints, according to the word, Hagar nor Ishmael was an error. Because all this was Sarah's plan. That's what sin does, y'all. All these innocent people. Ishmael was innocent, innocent and Hagar was innocent. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, Father, Father, Father. You with me? 
Amen. Verse 10. Wherefore she said unto Abram, Cast out this bond woman her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son, even Yitzhak. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. You see, stop acting like it's going to be easy when it comes to relationship. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 15. Verse 12. And Elam said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of the bond woman, and all that Sarah had said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice. For in Yitzhak shall your seed be called. Verse 13. And also, listen. The son of the bond woman, I will make a nation because of your seed. In other words, Yahweh says, if you obey me, I'm going to bless the boy. <coughs> Y'all know with me. Amen. You obeying me by putting Ishmael out, I'm going to take care of Ishmael, and I'm going to take care of you, but you got to let me do it my way, not your way. Amen. Amen. And Abram rose up early in the morning and took bread and bottled water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the lad, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered into the wilderness. Say, so you know how hard that is? I don't think you understand how hard it is. He didn't know where he was going, but what he was doing was obeying Yahweh. Amen. I need you to get rid of your Ishmael. Amen. And make sure you're not giving Ishmael shelter. Let us stand. Amen. Amen.